Yeah, my God talk today, I'm going to talk about how the smallest instrument controls the whole vessel. I'm going to talk about tongues. Okay, so your tongue is the most evil member of your whole body, yet it controls your whole body. It says a perfect man can control his tongue. That's what the Bible says. Okay, so the smallest instrument, which is the rudder, controls the whole ship. And so that's a metaphor, of course, for our tongue. Now, it would make sense that the tongue is the last instrument that we will give up to God. So it makes sense that when we speak in tongues, it's our last instrument that we give up to God. And there are two kinds of tongues. Now, it's really important not to get these two confused because this is a, there's a lot of confusion right now in the churches about the two tongues. Um, one tongue is in Acts, okay, and that is for the tongue of salvation. Um, that's the seal of salvation. Um, it's part of our born-again experience. It is the comforter. Uh, it is power. It's the firepower of God. It's when it changes our hearts from a heart to, of stone uh, to a heart of flesh. Um, it's when we become a new creation. It's part of becoming a new creation in Christ. Okay, first, of course, we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, and we um, He forgives us of our sins. We repent, and we renounce anything that is against Him, meaning that um, the renouncing part, like I got rid of most of my, I broke most of my rock and roll albums. I got rid of everything. I was very serious about God. And so it's a renouncing means to, you get rid of all the idols in your life. Anything that goes against you think what God would want you to have. I mean, he can always give stuff back to you, but it's important to not have any idols um, in your house. Anything that goes back to Eastern religion or anything like that, um, it's, it's comes creeping in and we're just unaware of it because the way it's offered to us is so secular we don't even think about it as having spiritual ties so we need to really um, really look into where the philosophy behind these um, ideas come from so then after that of course we're baptized in the name of Jesus and submerged now that um, is uh, identifying with his death and resurrection so when we it's dying to ourselves basically and being born in a new life and so now we belong to him we don't belong to ourselves anymore we're a soldier drafted into his army and um, we are in rank and order uh, we're in the soldier we're in the um, army and the kingdom of love now rather than fear and we're to talk that way we're to talk that way to others we're to talk that way um, about ourselves and so that's baptism and then after the immersion of baptism where we identify with his death and resurrection on the cross um, then we're, we've been cleaned our vessel has been cleaned and so now you can read Acts 2 and so Acts 2 um, talks about um, receiving the, the tongues now what he said what Jesus said is I will send you the comforter okay he said to go wait in the room wait in the upper room so they went up and waited in the upper room and when the comforter came it said tongues, uh, the wind came in and um, tongues of fire sat on each of them. So it's power. It's not just the tongue. It's the power of God, okay? And so they're receiving the power of God. And that's when, after you receive the power of God, then you can receive the other gifts, okay? But uh, receiving the tongues is, is your prayer language to God. And it's for when you don't know what else to pray. So the Spirit will intercede for you. Um, it also gives you the ability to... Um, translate the Bible in the in the spirit instead of just in the flesh see we all look at it in the flesh and so uh, we, we can't translate it in the spirit or rightly divide the word until we get the spirit and the evidence of the spirit is speaking in tongues um, so read Acts and I wouldn't really go past Acts until you get the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues some people it takes months. Some people, it takes years. I mean, me, it was just at the altar all the time. You got to find a church that believes in it so you can get it because if you don't have a church that believes in it and allows you to go to the altar and worships God, um, I got it when I was worshiping God and just praising and thanking God. So, um, and I like repetitious music. Go to a place that really rocks the music because where they worship is where they're loving God and that's where His Spirit's going to dwell with mankind. And so I like the repetition words that I didn't have to think about too much because uh, it was a way easier to go into the spiritual zone and receive the Holy Ghost. Now, what God told me was that um, 
all you got to do, he, he just told me right before I received it, is like, don't worry about what everybody else is thinking or about you or saying, you know, just like put off all am, ambition, ambitions and just uh, worship me, just focus on me. And like in that flash of a second, that's when I received the Holy Spirit like that. Uh, we just have to come away from ourselves and really focus 100% for one once in our life on God and not on ourselves. Uh, it's very difficult for a human being to do because the Bible says the heart of man is deceitfully wicked who can know it. So it is a little challenging, especially when you've never done that before. It's a brand new experience, but so is born again. Now the born again experience is a um, process. You know, it says we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We work it out each day. It's a relationship with God reading the word. And so um, it's not just like a one-time experience. It's something we continue to advance until we enter the rest of God. And then when we rest in God, we continue the experience and the um, and we continue getting to know him. So it's an ever-going relationship because he comes in, he cleans the vessel when we, when we uh, repent and when we're washed and we're washed clean with the word. And that's, the bapt- that's part of the baptism. And the vessel's clean so his spirit can come and dwell in us. It's not supposed to be connected, disconnected, disconnected, connected. <laughs> Um, when you're an excited Christian and people go, oh, it's just new for you. No, it's just like a crush on your boyfriend or girlfriend or your husband. It, it's never supposed to go away. You're never supposed to lose it. I mean, what do you have when you don't have excitement and joy? You have nothing. It says the joy of the Lord is our strength. We shouldn't give that up. I mean, just when you're excited now, you should be excited in 10 years. Those people that are giving you that advice, they've just lost it. They just have given up. They connect and disconnect and connect and disconnect.